Gainesville in the town of Shrewsbury on this glorious Saturday morning. Um, I'm here to welcome you on behalf of the Laurel Glen Cemetery Association of 1894 and the Shrewsbury Historical Society. Uh, a quick overview of what we're going to do this morning. We have a few remarks we're going to make here, followed by the unveiling of Vermont's newest roadside historic marker. We will then open the doors of Laurel Hall behind me so the folks who want to take a tour can do so. And you're also invited to visit the conservatory and the mausoleum across Route 103. And just down to my left is the Shrewsbury Historical Society Museum, which is also open. They have a cider and donuts there, and perhaps most important, porta potties, because there is no running water in this building. So we certainly invite you to go down there as well before you leave Cuttingsville. Uh, we're here on account of John Porter Bowman, and I want to tell you a bit about him. He was born in 1816, about three miles that away. Uh, his grand and his grandparents' tavern. Uh, they had a tavern there during the Revolutionary War, and Ethan Allen and the Grand Mountain Boys uh, it favored them. Uh, he apprenticed in the tannery trade, and first in Rutland, and then in New York, uh, and, and then came to Cuttingsville. He was here in 1851. He was 35 years old, and he had a tannery two miles down the road that way. Uh, he was well respected, in fact so well respected that the citizens of the town of Shrewsbury uh, elected him to be their representative to the uh, General Assembly. So he was in quite a good position, but it wasn't good enough for Mr. Bowman because he was a businessman and he wanted to expand his tannery business and he thought the best way to do that was to move to the Adirondacks. So he bought an unfinished tannery in a little town called Stony Creek, New York and moved over there and built a company town there. Um, not so long ago, we, we were at a marker dedication ceremony for Edward Hastings Ripley from Rutland, who some of you certainly know about. Uh, he was a Ar Union Army Brigade commander, and we're pleased today to have uh, Commander Dan Selick and some others from the Ripley Camp Number no. 4 Civil War group that's here. Uh, Ripley and Bowman were contemporaries. They were of the same era. Um, Ripley fought in the war. Uh, he was a he was a leader. Um, Bowman also contributed to the war effort by contributing leather goods. Uh, he supplied the boots, the saddles, the bridles, and such that uh, allowed the Union Army to fight and and win that war. So he contributed to the war effort in his own way. Uh, he was an, a tremendously successful businessman. He had made a fortune, but in other ways, his life was not was, had tragedy in it. And uh, in 1879, his daughter Ella died. She is, was just 22 years old, uh, and he was heartbroken. He and his wife had had a, a child some years earlier, but she had also died at four months old. So he suddenly was had no children, and then within six months. His wife, Jenny, died. So he was a heartbroken man, and he resolved to build a great marker and a mausoleum, a memorial for them. And he talked to the folks here in town of Shrewsbury and Cuttingsville, and it was agreed that he could put his mausoleum up across the way near the old cemetery. He commissioned a noted New York architect, G.B. Croft, to design the mausoleum across the way, as well as the other buildings on this property. And he also commissioned a famous New York sculptor by the name of Giovanni Torrini, who sculpted that larger than life uh, statue of Bowman you see across the way in grief, mourning the loss of his family. Um, the first summer after that mausoleum was built and completed and the rotten remains were placed there, more than 10,000 visitors came here to visit that mausoleum. There was a doorman at the door and a guest book to sign inside. After completing the mausoleum, Bowman had Croft build this residence behind me uh, where he could stay and visit his relatives. Bowman had named the cemetery across the way Laurel Glen. 
the laurel being an ancient symbol of wealth, prosperity, and eternal glory. And he named this magnificent mansion behind me Laurel Hall. Some know it as the Haunted Mansion, and we may talk about that later this morning. Uh, this, this mansion is probably one of Croft's greatest works, built in the Queen Anne style with East Lake and Stick style influence. And the conservatory across the way, the carriage house to my right, uh, and the caretaker's house across from that completed the, the, the complex. Now, John Bowman died in 1891. He left in his, his will, left this property in trust. And he asked the Vermont legislature to create a corporation to maintain the property in perpetuity. The General Assembly complied, creating the Laurel Glen Cemetery Association of 1894, which has managed the property ever since. Perpetu perpetuity is a long time. Um, Bowman left $50,000 in his will for the maintenance of the property, and that was ba adequate back in the 19th century. Uh, the mansion had servants with, that set the dining room table every evening, just in case Mr. Bowman and his family returned for dinner. And there was a groundskeeper across the way to maintain the cemetery and grow flowers for the cemetery and the conservatory. Uh, however, that modest endowment left 130 years ago is sadly no longer adequate to cover the maintenance and that this wonderful property deserves. Our current trustees want it to be open. We want it to be enjoyed and to benefit our community. We are searching for ideas about how this property can be used to benefit the community and how we can raise funds to maintain and use it. Now, the Preservation Trust of Vermont has been a great partner in this search as well as others. Today we're here to celebrate this party and its, this property and its historic significance. Please, when we get done, tour the grounds, enjoy its beauty, and we will endeavor in the months ahead to keep you and the community informed of our efforts to save this property. We'll welcome whatever ideas and assistance you can provide us in those efforts. Um, and having said that, let me, I'd like to invite Alex Tolstoy of the Preservation Trust of Vermont to say a few words. Alex? Thank you all. My name is Alex Tolso. I work for the Preservation Trust of Vermont, which is a, a statewide nonprofit that works to preserve the cultural landscape of our of our great state. Uh, oh, so, sorry. Uh, I was asked to come here to speak a little bit about the history of the building, um, and I could speak at length about East Lake style or Egyptian revival style or even the eccentric architect that designed these buildings. But I think most importantly. The design of these buildings reflected its original owner. Both the hall and the mausoleum are in the romantic style, and I think Mr. Bowman certainly was a romantic. He believed in eternal love, he believed in the afterlife, he believed in spirits. And I think he also believed in the future of our state and the future of our community, this community. And he made Assurances that this building would be saved and preserved in perpetuity to continue to be enjoyed by the community. But this assurance has only really went so far, right? And we're here to dedicate this marker today uh, that talks about the history of the building and the architect. But I think it, it doesn't quite mention this, the second part of the story, this long history of community members and local stewards that have cared for this building tirelessly working to preserve it, maintain it, and ensure that it is well, and will be part of the community. And I think it's groups like this, like this board and communities like this, that are as responsible for these buildings as Mr. Bowman or Mr. Croft, the architect. And it's groups like this and communities like yours and buildings like these that help preserve that sense of romanticism that Mr. Bowman was so interested in and that make this state so great and communities like this so great. So I want to thank this community and this board for their tireless work and ask that they please do continue to work so hard because these buildings are so incredible and they are an intricate part of what makes our community so special. So thank you again and thank you for inviting me. 